Are ya ready, kids? Because I'm not. It's time to do one of the most difficult countdown lists. Shit, one of the most difficult videos that I've ever had to make. The top 20 worst opening themes. Now, I usually love cartoon intros. They can be really fun to listen to, even on their own. And they can get you really excited for a show. When it's done well, hell, I'll listen to it while making other reviews. And some of my favorite pieces of music of all time are intros to television shows. They can be brilliant songs, all in the space of a minute or two. Then there are those themes. The themes that make you revile the shows that they're from. In my travels across the spectrum of animation, I've come across some truly awful, awful theme songs. Some of them will be on this list, and some of them, even ones that I complained incessantly about, got shut out by some new faces. The true essence of musical horror. The rules this time around are a bit different from my top 20 best themes. This time, my themes must come from the American version of the television show. I mean, I tried to include this from all over the world, but... <laughs> No, just, no. This does mean, however, that I can put English dubs of foreign shows on this list. Here's how the story goes, we find out by the treasure in the grand line, there's no doubt. The pirate whose eye is on it, he'll sing, I'll be king of the pirates, I'm gonna be king. Also, keep in mind that just because the theme song is bad, doesn't mean that the show is bad. And some shows that I really love don't have the best themes, like Star vs. the Forces of Evil, for instance. Okay, enough messing around. We're about to count down the top 20 worst cartoon theme songs of all time in America. I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. I'm having a hard time figuring out what to put for number 20. I honestly had a lot of choices, and we'll talk about them in the end when I go over honorable mentions. But with a lot of competition, the intro would have to make a damn good argument on why it deserved to be on this list. Yeah, you can tell this is gonna be a fun list when Mr. Pickles is only at number 20. I'll tell you the truth. Metal is my least favorite genre of music. However, I have a feeling that if I was actually a fan of metal, this would be so much higher on this list. This is the blandest, most generic fucking metal music that I've ever heard. Just reeking of pandering, trying to desperately get at an audience. It matches the show all too well though, trying way too fucking hard to be something it has absolutely no knowledge about. Why the fuck are the lyrics below the music track? Isn't metal about primal rage and shouting? And then there's this. Could you honestly make that shout any more ear grating? That line right there, that is why this is on the list. That is the most ear grating soundbite that I've ever heard. Honestly, there's not much else to say about this generic piece of crap. There you are. Good boy. I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. You ever get one of those shows that you come across and it makes you ask the question, why the hell haven't I reviewed this yet? It has butt in the title. Nickelodeon, right? Yeah, Nickelodeon. Oh, and they had a toy line by Hasbro, a marriage made in heaven. So they start the song by chanting this. I have no idea what that stands for. Okay, I have been informed that apparently it stands for butt-kicking mode. <laughs> 
I love how they sing it like they expect literally everyone to understand exactly what they mean, even if you've never seen the show before. Honestly, if I didn't know any better, I think that the show was so incompetent that it misspelled its abbreviation. Considering it's a show called But Ugly Martians, that's not out of the realm of plausibility. Then again, the temptation to keep singing B-U-M or bum probably single-handedly shoots down that theory. But whose idea was it to keep singing during the theme song? The thing that is supposed to introduce your show to new viewers, something that new viewers couldn't possibly understand unless they had the patience to look into it. You know those things burst into fire, right? Well, at least that kind of makes me want to watch the show. We don't wanna conquer Earth. I just wanna fill my dirt. Oh, so at least one of these characters is nothing but a carbon copy archetype that plagued the 2000s. One of the biggest problems with the theme song is how badly it just drones on and on. They are the Martians, the butt ugly Martians. They are the Martians, the butt ugly Martians. Which is not something you should be advertising, by the way. You know what, fuckers? Try me. Okay, okay, I understand. There is no need for an altercation. I'll, I'll be on my way. Shit, I'm getting out of here. I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. Well, this is a theme song that can go die in hell. Honestly, if there's anything about this theme song that surprises me, it's how low it actually is on the list. Everything that this theme song does just annoys me. First of all, it's one of those theme songs that shows its name over and over again and expects you to get whatever it's about. my least favorite genre of theme song, by the way. Yeah, we're gonna be seeing quite a few of them on this list. I mean, this song even ends like this. Yay me! No, not yay you, fuck you! I hate that this theme song goes on for a solid fucking minute. With a tropical beat, that gets repetitive and really old very quickly. I hate its usage of terrible space music. And we've got random people angrily shouting at Fred. It goes through so many random genres that there's absolutely no cohesion, and it gathers up in a 10 theme song pile up. But all of that is secondary to what puts it squarely on this list. This is why it's on the list. Beatbox belching. That's it! I, I fucking quit! Just, just hit me with the next one. I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. You're going to notice that most of the songs on this list are here due to their music. Or at the very least, music is a major part of it. I mean, if a song sounds good, I could stomach some pretty bland, insipid, or just plain stupid lyrics. However, I, I do have a limit of good sounding songs with terrible, terrible lyrics. And Bryce Face is that limit. While I don't think it has the worst lyrics ever, that's for a later candidate, it certainly has some of the most stupid lyrics. A theme song is supposed to tell you what the show is about. You know, get a feel with it. It's kind of like an advertisement for the show. What does Bray's face tell us? It tells us that this show stars the most stereotypical teenager ever, and that this show is probably gonna be blander than plain bread. I mean, I haven't watched the show before. I have no idea what it's really about. Judging from the animation, this show is about a high school girl with super magnetic powers. I can imagine the lyricist trying to write the theme songs to other show. Ducks! There's some adventure! Look how cool it is! Ducktails! Woohoo! School bus! Lizards! 
There's some learning. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Ghosts and shit. Can I have my paycheck now? The lyrics are the primary reason that this theme song is on the list, but the singing isn't the best either. Something tells me I've been dreaming of someone who was never real. Fitting imagery because it sounds like the singer just woke up. I mean, you could do a few things before you start singing, like maybe gargle some water. It's good for you. This is the first theme song that comes to mind when I think of something that just makes your show seem so stupid and cliche. And in the genre of a show that is excessively crowded with stupid and cliche shows, I could see why the show had three seasons? What the fuck? I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. Sharks, swords, yogurt, cakes, fries, smartphones, hot tubs, yeah. So, this is the first of many, many songs on this list that are trying way too hard to appeal to kids. Pickle and peanut. Pickle and peanut. Pickle and I've already torn apart this theme song in my review of the Pickle and Peanut episode, but some of this stuff bears repeating. Tight pants, widescreens, tacos, wheelies, freestyles, dress stores, mini trampolines. This song is like the minimum possible to technically be declared a song. The lyrics are nothing more than a kindergartner shopping list, and the writer trying desperately to appeal to kids. And failing massively, by the way. I mean, where does anyone get the idea that even half of this stuff is cool? Sweetie, can you help me understand what is hit with the cool crowd at your school? Ugh. Ew, Dad, go away! I'm trying to Snapchat my bae! We're going to this super lit party tonight, and we gotta coordinate our gauges so my selfies look good! Snapchat bae lit selfies? I think you're onto something. I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. The pack is back, those chomping at his feet, packs our hero, pack just can't be beat, yeah. You ever come across one of those theme songs that basically tries to act as the main character's posse? It tries to be hip and edgy and make the character seem cooler than he really is? Yeah, as you might be able to tell, there are going to be a lot of those songs on this list. A lot of people asked me about this show when it began, but I never gave my opinion because it didn't seem to appeal to me. Cartoons based on video games have a bad track record. I mean, there's certainly plenty of potential with Pac-Man, not from the original arcade game, but the extra stories and characters from games like Pac-Man World. But even with that in mind, the theme song was enough to keep me away. The pack is back is not a good rhyme or phrase. Stop saying it over and over again. No one should say that. It doesn't sound cool. It sounds like you're trying to raise a demon from the grave. Ghost chomping at his feet. I know you need something to rhyme with beat, but Pac-Man's feet have nothing to do with his ability to eat ghosts. I know it's a saying like, the opportunity is at his feet, but it still doesn't make much sense. This theme song tells me nothing about Pac-Man, but worst of all, it just sounds fucking horrible. The singer seems to be straining his voice to say the same repetitive shit over and over again. The rap breakdown is the only part of the song that doesn't hurt my ears. And that's really sad. Not the facts, the rap breakdown. The rap breakdown is horribly, horribly sad. The fact that this song even has a rap breakdown is horribly sad. I thought we agreed to stop doing that in the early 2000s. It has the opposite effect of what you're looking for. It makes you look lame and not at all with it if you catch my drift. I mean, the song starts out nicely with the actual Pac-Man theme, but there's literally no transition between that and whatever you'd call this song. It's like, you remember how great Pac-Man was? Now look at it! Look at what we've done to it! We're still relevant! Fuck you! I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. I have three words. The pack is back. The pack is back.
No, 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 not that one. The other Pac-Man theme song. The one from the 1980s cartoon. Okay, so the music for this one sounds like a chainsaw went off in an arcade. Then it gets into this stupid off-key ditty. Then this guy starts, I have no idea what you'd call it. It literally sounds like he's taking a shit. Guess how many times he says it? He says it twice. And then he like, gives up. I guess he got the shit out. There's barely anything here, and what's left is just horrible. It's the same annoying melody, and it's not even the Pac-Man theme. The Pac-Man cartoon was made during a time when cartoons were going through plenty of hard times. The early 80s still had plenty of the problems of the 70s. And yes, the show was also made by Hanna-Barbera, but that's not an excuse to have a terrible theme song. Hanna-Barbera gave us the Scooby-Doo theme. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, where are you? We got some work. The Flintstones, the Jetsons, even bad cartoons like Frady Cat don't have horrible themes. I don't think that I could even properly articulate why this theme song ticks me off like it does. Part of it is just how little there is. I must have those power pellets! This is close to nothing. Beyond sound like a demented circus, worse than nothing. When the music takes a turn, any turn, the transition is grisly and tough. It tells us next to nothing about the show in hand, and expects you to get that it's Pac-Man. So much that they only say it twice. I mean, at least other cartoons like this say the same thing all the way through. You gave up on the second try. Nice. I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. I can't even touch this next one. This guy's music, it hits me so hard, makes me say, oh my lord. Yeah, you knew this one was coming. I'm actually surprised with how bad this theme song is. I mean, Hammer has some talent. If you listen to Can't Touch This, it's clear that he has some really good flow. But this, this theme song, it literally sounds constipated. His heart was out of sight, so Gramps opened up the bag and took out the magical shoes. He set them on the ground. Like this is the first draft and their first take. It feels like the tempo was written in negative numbers. I might have actually spared the song under the factor of being so bad it's good, but that's a charm that wears off way too quickly, unfortunately. You can cut off this intro about 15 seconds in and it'd be totally fine. But no, it goes on to the whole backstory. How it started a long time ago. The legend of the hammer and how it began to grow. And it just constantly beats you down. Could you imagine him like reading a book like this? Together they had power. They stood up for what was right. Oh, that line isn't clumsy at all. So the theme song takes about a minute to explain Hammerman's backstory. The entire backstory, never mind the first episode of 11 or 22 minutes trying to explain this. No, we're gonna put it in a minute and a half. At the start of every single episode. He gets magical shoes and he's a crime fighter. That's all you need to say. I mean, here's Ben 10. A long time ago, the legend of the hammer and how it began to grow. He was given magical shoes from a hip hop Motown dude. Together they had power. They stood up for what was right. It's a much better opening theme that gets the backstory down in less than half of the time. Less than a quarter of the time. To find a man they knew could tell who was worthy of the load. They met a guy named Stanley who was dancing every night. You guys did write more than one draft of this, right? Uh, who am I kidding? It's just a fucking kid show. They'll watch anything, we don't have to try. It's not like literally every celebrity-based show before this one has crashed and burned horribly. Ramps opened up the bag and took 
got the magical shoes! Was that line really necessary? There are several things more important to the story than that little detail. I mean, how about these lines? Gramps had to press the gas pedal to get his car working. He had to turn his key in the ignition. He hit a rest stop along the way because the gas station burritos he had ordered the night before were causing a train wreck in his digestive system. You know, you don't have to make the synopsis of the entire first episode in your theme song, right? That's what the first episode is for. God, this theme song is just so painful. Magic on the mic, my ass. I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. There once was a man named Gold Roger, who was king of the pirates. He had fame, power, and wealth beyond your wildest dreams. In the moment that I said I'd be including anime dubs in this list, you knew that it was coming. Four kids, we meet again. I've talked about this company before in my top 10 worst cartoons of the 2000s list. And besides dubbing anime, they're notable for one thing in particular. But it's hard to save the world when you're falling in love. They're fucking horrible theme songs, with the exception of Pokemon Season 1. I don't want to go too deep into this for two reasons. Number one, there are many other videos and people who have done a much better job of analyzing this than I possibly could. Reason number two, this one's a four-way tie. The time. The I know it's not an anime, but it's still a 4 kids show, so it counts here. And it's probably the least horrible of them, but it had to go on the list. Honestly, it's actually probably the most tragic theme song on this entire list. Because the instrumental version of this song sounds really good. Almost something like you'd find in a Sonic video game. It just ties into the theme of Future City very well. So how do they fuck it up? You guessed it, the lyrics trying too damn hard to be relevant. You know, it just occurred to me that maybe networks don't know this. Rap? Maybe mostly lyrics. But that doesn't mean it's easy, for one. And also, you do need some technical singing skills to pull this off. I swear, every single time I hear one of these rap themes, it sounds like they just pulled some random guy from the office into the sound booth. Here's what a rap song and a cartoon theme should sound like. Not this! Yeah, I get it. Theme songs like these are made by marketing hacks trying to be cool with the youth. And since they're nowhere near dying out, in the next few years, I guess we can expect terrible intros to start using badly processed dubstep to be cool with the kids. It's a dark future ahead of us, ladies and gentlemen. I originally didn't want to put the song on the list, or at least this high, because of the instrumental version. And to be honest, it probably lowered the four kids' place a few notches. Although, it's hard to give this song any sympathy when we get lines like this. It's so not yesterday, bastard. No shit! No fucking shit! Even during the present day, it's still not yesterday! God, these are some of the stupidest theme song lyrics in history. Except for this theme song's lyrics. What the hell is this repetitive dribble? Not even the Friendship is Magic theme talks about friendship and working together this fucking much. I mean, in other Ensemble shows, including other Magical Girl anime, the theme song tends to go into the team members, different personalities, or at the very least their powers. God, at the very least they give a roll call. The most prominent part of this theme song seems to be this line here. I highly doubt that there's as much romance in the show as this theme song lets us in on. And on top of that, it's also kind of wrong. Surprisingly enough, especially Magical Girl anime. Saving the world and falling in love, they kind of go hand in hand. 
to the point where it's pretty much mandatory. If you're in a piece of media, it's harder not to fall in love when you're saving the world. While writing this review, I've had to listen to each of these songs on loop for like 10 minutes, and my therapy bills definitely show that. But for this song in particular, it gets to the point where you can't really tell where this song ends and where it begins, because it's the same inane bullshit over and over again. Just team up, team up, team up. There are so many better themes about togetherness and even romance that don't rely on being this fucking repetitive. And speaking of repetitive... Kirby, 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 that's a name you should know. Kirby, 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 he's the star of the show. He's more than you think, he's got maximum pain. Kirby, Kirby, Kirby's the one. Hello, my old friend. I have been waiting years to give this theme song a good-ass thrashing. My least favorite genre of theme song is the kind that shouts its name over and over at you and expects you to get whatever it's about because whatever it is is so totally fucking awesome. And Kirby right back at ya is the king of that. It's the king, it's the emperor, it's the fucking god! I mean, the song goes on for a full minute and it doesn't even tell you what the hell Kirby's power is. And it's simple when his power is eating. We're supposed to think that he's great because he's Kirby. The only info about who Kirby is we get is this. Too much pink energy is dangerous. Kirby has maximum pink. First of all, that's nowhere near true. There are at least five more levels of pink he could be. That is not maximum pink. And secondly, who the fuck cares what color Kirby is? I mean, in his first American game, he was white, like a ghost. No one is interested in Kirby for the color. And I've got to talk about the singer. Why the hell is he so passionate about this? You know, in a lot of movies where the main character is in a lounge and, and there's this guy on stage singing jazz or show tunes or something with an army of saxophones and trumpets behind him? Why does the singer of this song sound like that? Why the hell is he so passionate about this? It, it just paints the most ridiculous picture in my mind. I don't even know what else to say about this. It's Kirby, 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 Kirby for, for a fucking minute. Kirby, Kirby. Yes, I know! Shut up! Just get on with the stupid show! I wanna watch DDD sound like your 70 Sam! I need a monster to claw but I dare Kirby! And now, for the worst for kids theme song. You probably guessed it. Yo! Was, was rap seriously this popular with kids in the early 2000s and the 90s? It seems that every tryhard attempting to be hip with the kids tried to make a terrible, terrible rap. Why were they so common? I think Danny Phantom and maybe Samurai Jack, if you count that as a rap, are the only cartoons that ever pulled off being good while having a rap theme song. Any other show, if it starts off with a rap, it's pretty much principle at this point to ignore it because it will almost always be terrible. I mean, the theme song starts like this. There once was a man named Gold Roger, who was king of the pirates. He had fame, power, and wealth beyond your wildest dreams. Before they hung him from the gallows, these were the final words he said. Yeah, you know, I always wanted to hear Brock talk about execution. And four kids really thought that this series was for younger kids, so they edited out all the blood and the violence and guns and shit. Really, the worst part is the breakdown roll call. You know what? I, I take it back. Mew Mew Power is much better off because it doesn't have a roll call. You know that doctoring means forging or editing documents, right? It is the least exciting crime possible. Here's what they say about Nami. Not what? Four kids? That's that's really the only way you could describe her, her character. I swear, the only good theme song Four Kids ever did was the season one Pokemon theme. But then again, how could you screw up a Pokemon theme? <laughs> there, where there's a will, there's a way. And now, the stars of Four Kids will sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see? Whoa, what the hell is this? It it can't be! It looks like us! But but it doesn't sound like us, and it, it it's English. Is this what they did with us in America? It can't be! It can't!
I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves, and this is how it goes. Oh, for the love of God, give the anime pack to four kids. These donuts are great. Jelly filled are my favorite. Nothing beats a jelly filled donut. Pokemon used rap. Needless to say, it wasn't very effective. Pokemon's dignity fainted. Whose idea was this shit? It's horrible. First of all, it's so suspiciously similar to the Digirap from the Digimon movie, which was rightfully derided. If you're making your theme a rap, unless you're an actual fucking rapper who is writing the theme song himself, then your theme will be horrible. Actually, no, considering Hammerman in the background over there, even if you are a fucking rapper, your rap theme will fail. No more raps and cartoon themes. No more raps and cartoon themes, please. No more raps and cartoon themes. I don't even know what to say about this. I mean, this is doubly insulting because the original theme song from season one still holds up like 20 years later. I wanna be the very best like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test. To train them is my cause. You can keep playing that all the way through. The Simpsons does it. This is another theme song that just shouts its name over and over again. But to its credit, it does try to talk about the good aspects of Diamond and Pearl. You know, that does sound really impressive. Or it would be if this was the Johto theme. For the love of God, this is the fourth generation. And this theme song states that it has the bare basics required to be a new Pokemon series. Okay, am I watching Pokemon or The Walking Dead? Not with that attitude. <laughs> 